thank you, Leo, for this introduction. So today we are talking about the principal ideal problem in cyclotomic fields because we are not afraid of cyclotomic fields and uh, crypt analysis of a fully homomorphic encryption scheme. Okay, so first, what is the principal ideal problem? So it consists in finding a generator of an ideal, uh, assuming this ideal is principal. Okay, um, this problem is computationally hard, but there is not so many applications in that form. So we have the derived form, the short principal ideal problem, that consists in finding a short generator of this ideal. This has application in cryptography, so it was already presented in, in the previous talk, so the smart and workout run encryption scheme and uh, the multilinear map of Garg, Gentry, and Alevi. So for solving this pipe, a uh, short principle ideal problem, we have two distinct parts. So the first one is given any z basis of uh, the ideal to find one generator without any condition on the generator, except that it actually generates the ideal. And the second part is reduction uh, from any generator to a short one. So uh, as already specified in the previous talk, uh, this reduction part has been already well studied in the previous years because so Campbell, Groves, and Shepard found a, a, a solution in polynomial time, and it was proven by Kramer, Duca, Pycroft, and Wegef last year at Eurocrypt with an extension to all prime power cyclotomic field. That's why we're interested in solving the pipe in prime power cyclotomic fields, because thanks to this polynomial time reduction, we have also solved this pipe. So here is the key generation process for the smart and workout run scheme, just in order to give you an idea of what we can do with, uh, with this pipe. So th the, the two first parts are for fixing um, the, the number field, that is a, a power of two cyclotomic field. And then we construct a generator with this polynomial G, thanks to another polynomial S with coefficient in that set. And because, uh, because of this uh, set, we know that the generator is quite small in comparison with all the elements in the, in the cyclotomic field. In addition, we want the norm of uh, this generator, so the evaluation in zeta of polynomial G, to be prime number just in order to avoid the, the splitting attacks. Then the secret key is this generator G, and um, the public key is any of the bases of this idea also. Any Z bases of something with two generators. Here we've got the, the Hermit form, that is a special form from, from the ideal, but any Z bases, it's okay. Then our goal is to recover the secret key from the public key. So it's key recovery, we, we don't um, really study the, the problem of uh, decryption, but just uh, a key recovery, okay. So our algorithm uh, contains four phases. So the first one is a reduction to the totally real subfield. So it's again a subfield, but this time there is only one subfield, so it's okay. So this just consists in halving the dimension by two. It's always better to have something with smaller dimension. The second step, is a descent because at the beginning we have a, a large ideal and we want that at each step to have norms, uh, to have ideals with norms smaller and smaller. Uh, in the end, at the third step, we have to take care of this smooth ideal, th these small ideals. And th the fourth part is the reduction to a short generator from any arbitrary generator. Okay, so all the complexity I will give now are expressed in the discriminant of the field that is exactly for that case, the dimension to the dimension. And we will use the L sub-exponential notation and if you are not familiar with it, just think that L of alpha is something in two to the N to the alpha plus a little something. 
Okay, so now I, I will speak about the, the details. So um, the first part is the reduction to the totally real subfield. So uh, we have a cyclotomic field of dimension n, and we want to work in the totally real subfield of dimension n over 2. So this is based on the gan Pusilo algorithm that has polynomial complexity. So it takes as input uh, a, a z basis of our ideal, that is principal, and something uh, on the generator, so the product between u and uh, its complex conjugate. And the output is the generator. So we are happy because we can find the generator. The problem is that if g is the private key, we have no information about this product, g times g bar. So we cannot apply it in that way. The solution is to introduce a, a new algebraic integer u. So defined in that way, here's the norm factor is just there for avoiding working with denominators. So from the z-basis of g, we can obtain a z-basis of u, and um, we have uh, information about uh, the product because I it's exactly the square of the norm of the ideal, so we know it. So we can apply the gantry silo algorithm on this ideal, and we obtain the product so we can avoid the norm factor. And thanks to this product, we are able to build this ideal i plus generated by g plus g bar, even if we don't know g plus g bar. And this ideal belongs to the totally real subfield. In the end, once we have recovered a generator of our, our ideal i plus, then it, it's just, we, we just need to multiply it by this quantity in order to recover the generator g of the input ideal. So now we have reduce our problem to the same problem, but in the totally real subfield. Then here is an outline of the descent. So at the beginning, we have uh, an input ideal with no arbitrary layout. And um, so we begin by bootstrapping the descent. So it's reduction. We will see later the details, but you can see is a ideal reduction. And we obtain something in L of three halves, um, and using smoothness results, we can expect to have something in that is L of one smooth. And after this first step, then w we continue the descent, and we see that again the norm will decrease. And in the end, we have something that is that has norm uh, in L of one, and we know that. Using smoothness result, we can obtain something that is L of one half smooth. Okay, so here are the details. So the initial one, uh, at the beginning, we have uh, an idea of norm arbitrary layout. And uh, what we use is lattice reduction. So we have to consider an ideal uh, built from the, the, you know, we have to consider a lattice built from this ideal in order to perform lattice reduction. So this lattice, uh, is built from the canonical embedding of the ring of integers of the totally real subfield is in something in uh, as a power of r. Um, so you, you just have to consider the elements of the z basis of the ideal and just look at its complex embeddings and we obtain a lattice. And then we perform lattice reduction. So we use the dbkz reduction with block size defined in that way just for keeping a complexity that is below L of one half. Um, so the output of this lattice reduction is a small vector in the lattice that corresponds with an algebraic integer v uh, that belongs to the ideal. And um, thanks to this algebraic integer, there exists a uniquely determined integral ideal b such that uh, the ideal generated by v is equal to a times b, and we have this upper bound uh, on the ideal, the norm of the ideal b. Okay, the cost of this reduction is polynomial in the dimension and in the size of the input, and we have this term in L of one half because of the block size we have chosen. Okay, so at, at this moment we have something in L of three half, but if we remember, uh, I want something in L of one. 
this is done using smoothness results. So we have to to assume this following heuristics that is something really well known for class group computation and old index calculus method. Um, so we need to assume that the norm of an ideal, no, yeah. We need to assume that an ideal that has norm that is below L of A is L of B smooth with pr a probability greater than L of A minus B to the minus one. So um, performing smoothness tests um, can be done uh, using the ECM algorithm, so I'll tick curve method, and uh, with a smoothness bound in L of B, this costs L of B over two. So applying to our ideal, we have an something that can be L of one smooth with probability in L of one half, and each test cost L of one half. So what we want to do is just to test L of one half ideals in order to obtain one that is L of one smooth. The problem is that the input ideal is fixed. I, I cannot change it. So we just add a randomization factor, so the product of the PI to the EI for small primed ideals. Because as in the end I want small ideals, I can multiply it by small ideals, it's okay. It, it won't change my, my result. So I, I can test L of one half such ideals in order to obtain one that is L of one smooth. Okay, so now um, I have ideals that are that, that has norm uh, uh, below L of one and I want to continue my descent, but if I do the same thing, I will obtain the same bounds and uh, I cannot find something better. So I have to change my reduction process and we use what we call the churn streak because of the notes, but it's something well known in the community. So we, we change the lattice, uh, now we don't look at the canonical embedding, but we look at the coefficient embedding in the, this basis of the ring of integers of the totally real subfield. So we have an integral lattice that we can put in Hermit form, that is a special form for the lattice with that is triangular. And uh, when the lattice is in that form, then uh, we have results that we can find shorter vector in sublattice with smaller dimension. So the result is that if we have as input uh, an ideal with norm below L of alpha, then the algebraic integer we will find and the ideal B in the same way. We so the norm will be bounded by this quantity and using the same process for the randomization of as in the first uh, reduction, we can obtain by testing L of one half ideals uh, something that is L of two alpha plus one over four smooths. Okay, so at the beginning we have L of alpha, in the end we have this quantity, so this is a reduction if alpha is greater than one half. Okay, so now I have the descent, so I can do that recursively, and in the end uh, I just need to know, oh yeah, I, I don't talk about the cost, but because the lattice reduction is the same, it's L of one half, and the smoothness test also is L of one half. So yeah, th the only thing uh, I have to speak about now is just where I stop the descent. So after about L steps, we have something in that form, where the norm is bounded by this quantity. And if we fix L as something in log log N, then we have this equality, because th th the term in um, one over log N is very small and actually we can avoid it. Um, the for those who are familiar with the L notation, it we can do that if we multiply the second constant by a factor E. Okay, so now um, I know that all my ideals have norm below L of one half. I know that the number of my the number of ideals involved is uh, upper bounded by L of one half, and 
all the steps I have performed is in L of one half, so that the total cost of my descent is L of one half. The only thing I have to do now is to take care of my ideals that have norm below L of one half. So this is done using the same method at as class group computation. So it's an index calculus method. I have to fix a factor base. So I take all the prime ideals with norm that is below the bound B. And I perform a relation collection. So I, I want to construct a, a full rank matrix. And what is a relation? So a relation is obtained when we have a principal ideal that splits on the factor base. So our idea is to test uh, ideal generated by small um, algebraic integers v constructed in that way with small vi. We know that the norm of such v is below L of 1, so we know that if we test L of 1 half such ideals, we will find L of 1 half smooth ideals. So this, this the cost is in L of 1 half 2. And it was the, the kind of matrix you obtained. So you know, we have the vi, that is the algebraic integer, and then in the matrix for the i's line, we, we have this old valuation in the prime ideals of the factor base. So this is the, the matrix we have constructed. Once we have the matrix, um, we also construct a, a vector uh, with where we put all the um, we put all the valuation in the prime ideals of the factor base for the input ideals. Then we have all the information of all the, the L of one half smooth ideals we had as input. And then it just, to, to, to solve our problem, just solving a, a linear system, M times X equals Y. And then I in that X, we will have the exponent for constructing our generator, and for that we will use the VI we have used in the relation collection. So in the end, we have a generator of all the products of the L of one half smooth ideals. So we have a generator for the last line of, of the diagram we I show you at the beginning, and then using all the algebraic integers that appear during the descent step, then we are able to recover a generator of the top of the tree. Then we have solved our problem and we have a generator of the input ideal in the totally real subfield so that we can obtain something for the ideal in the psychotomic field. Okay, we, we also have some implementation results. So, um, we looked at the dimension uh, 2, fif 56, yes. Um, so we performed the Gantry Seidler algorithm for reduce the problem to the dimension 128. So it was, uh, we think, the first time that Gantry Seidler algorithm won on such dimension. And it cost 20 hours and 24 gigabytes of memory. And after that, something really s not strange, but very convenient up here, that is, we perform one BKZ reduction using the FPLLL software. Um, so this goes between 10 minutes and four hours, but this is sufficient for performing the full descent because of the small dimension, 128, and because we know that there exists a small generator, and we know that lattice reduction performs well uh, in practice, better than theoretically. And we, are, we were able to recover a generator of the totally real su of the, uh, the ideal or in the totally real subfield with just one BKZ reduction. So, so that w with the descent is just only one step. And we, <coughs> we are able to recover so the secret key in dimension 256 in less than one day. So this is That's it. <laughs> That's it for me, and thank you for your interruption. Any question for our speaker?
Okay, so maybe uh, what block size did you run BKZ for uh, this test production? Um, so mm, there is two block size we used. That's why we have a timing between 10 minutes and four hours. At the beginning, we run uh, with block size 24, which run with 10 minutes, and in 75% uh, of the time, it's sufficient. And when the generator we obtain is not sufficiently small, then we perform a BKZ with uh, block size 30. So this run in more time, and we obtain a, a result for all the, the instances we, we have tested. 